Hello Bloomington, I'm Mayor Tim Bussey and this is the Council Minute for the week of April 15th. On Monday night, staff presented the 90% designs and cost estimates for the work that's planned at Bryant and Tretbaugh Parks. As the name implies, the 90% design indicates the plans for the redesign of these two parks is just about complete and we're getting close to the actual start of work to redevelop and rebuild these two great parks. The work is exciting because Bryant and Tretbaugh are the first Bloomington parks to be redeveloped using the priorities and the recommendations of the Park System Master Plan. Developing the Park System Master Plan was a purposeful and robust process that included extensive and invaluable input from the community, from consultants and from city staff. That engagement and inclusion captured the voices of Bloomington residents and at the same time several studies were done to understand how Bloomington could provide new park amenities and experiences. There were two important takeaways. The first was strong consensus that significant reinvestment is needed to update and improve the quality of parks in Bloomington. The second is that the plan provided the opportunity for everyone to rethink and reconsider what parks in Bloomington could or should be. The plan provides a roadmap and a very specific action plan to guide park investments and programming to ensure that investments are community driven, equitable, and advancing the priorities identified by the community. And those priorities are natural resources, trails, new park amenities, and equity. And it is so impressive how these two park redesigns meet those priorities. The redesign of Tretbaugh Park will feature Bloomington's first mountain bike skills course and an all wheels experience. It's designed to be accessible to a wide variety of ages and abilities. Natural resource benefits include reducing the amount of mowed turf grass from two and a third acres to just half an acre. It includes the addition of almost three acres of native plantings and the planting of 56 trees. The redesign of Bryant Park will also include a first, Bloomington's first fully inclusive and accessible playground. The redesign will also include a small skate park and a larger open green space that combines the baseball outfield with a cricket pitch and room for soccer. Natural resource benefits at Bryant include almost doubling the size of the wetland area, reducing the mowed turf grass from 11 acres to just three and a half acres, adding approximately 10 acres of upland native area and planting 253 trees. And I also want to mention the city continues to advance safe and connected pedestrian and bicycle friendly trail networks. Community engagement and the active transportation plan identified opportunities for safer access to Bryant and Tretbaugh parks and the engineering department is leading the design and construction of new sidewalks and street crossings in collaboration with these projects. Also, trail loops within the parks, they're a priority and they are a focus of both of these projects. One final thing I want to note, the 30% drafts for Bryant and Tretbaugh were approved by the City Council in June of last year. Community engagement continued through 2023 and into this year, which included events at the two parks, Let's Talk Bloomington online engagement, meetings with residents, collaboration with the Todd Pod Playgroup, and guidance by the Park Arts and Recreation Commission. If you lay the 30% drafts for design next to the 90% drafts, you'll see significant changes. Without question, the community engagement facilitated by our parks team and the invaluable input from residents and user groups shaped what these 90% designs look like. And that gives me a great deal of confidence as we move forward with additional projects on our Park System Master Plan and with the planning for the Bloomington Forward projects. We have a tested template in place that will guide our work and ensure that upcoming projects will reflect the needs and the desires of Bloomington residents. Also on Monday, I read a proclamation declaring the week of April 28th through May 4th as Small Business Week in Bloomington. Small businesses have a huge impact on Minnesota's economy. Did you know that more than 99% of Minnesota businesses are considered small businesses and they employ about 75% of the state's workforce? Joining me at the podium on Monday were participants in the CEO Start Program, a partnership between the City of Bloomington and Hennepin County designed to help aspiring entrepreneurs launch their business ideas. Over the course of 10 weeks, this cohort of 12 future business leaders completed a comprehensive program that gave them a solid foundation of business fundamentals, access to resources, a community of support, an understanding of their next steps, 
and the confidence to move forward. I had the pleasure of being part of their graduation ceremony and hearing them each give their five minute pitch for their businesses was inspiring. Over the past two years, Bloomington has invested a considerable amount of time and resources into efforts to attract and support small businesses. We're working with regional and state partners to provide resources, professional expertise, and guidance for small businesses at all levels, from budding entrepreneurs seeking help to launch to establish small businesses pursuing growth strategies. For example, we're working to make connections within the small business community. The city has started a Welcoming Wednesday program for small business owners that takes place here at Civic Plaza over the lunch hour on the second Wednesday of the month. And the city is partnering with the Minneapolis Regional Chamber of Commerce on our new Bloomington Business Connections program. And speaking of partnerships with the Minneapolis Chamber, I hope you've all heard about Hatch Bloomington. It's an entrepreneurial pitch competition, think Shark Tank, where the winner will be awarded $100,000 to open their very own bricks and mortar business right here in Bloomington. Applications are open, so sharpen those pencils and get those business plans and elevator pitches ready to go. The competition will include community voting so everyone can have a voice in choosing the semi-finalists and the eventual winner. In an effort to keep our small businesses looking sharp, the city has a new facade improvement program that offers financial grants to cover up to 50% of total project costs for businesses to improve their facade, their signage, patios, lighting, landscape, and more. Over the winter, Bloomington hosted the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development's first event highlighting local and state resources for entrepreneurs and small businesses. And finally, last month, the Bloomington Port Authority kicked off work on a five-year economic development action plan that will provide short, medium, and long-term strategies to build Bloomington's economy, and that includes businesses of all sizes all across the city. You can learn more about small business support and resources at our website. And I hope that during Small Business Week and all throughout the year, you'll visit our small business merchants and never miss an opportunity to support small business in Bloomington. And finally today, on Monday night, we swore in our newest full-time Bloomington firefighters. The seven new firefighters officially started on April 1st, and they are currently in the middle of their six-week training academy. They will be on trucks and working shifts by the middle of May, and we are very excited to have them on board. That will do it for this week's Council Minute. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, stay safe, Bloomington.